everyone. Today I'd like to talk about pasta makers, specifically the extruder versus the roller. Are they redundant? Do they do the same thing? What are each good for? What are the pros and cons? Despite the name, they are actually different tools for different purposes and are not as similar as their name might suggest. The way I see it, extruders are primarily for low moisture, water-based pasta with rough edges to produce starchy cooked pasta. And rollers are for silky, delicate egg pasta, usually from already kneaded and well-rested dough. Intuitively, you probably already know that any short, shaped pasta, like penne, ziti, rigatoni, or wagon wheel, are extruder pasta. But did you know that your everyday store-bought spaghetti are almost exclusively extruder pasta as well? If you get a pricier, rough-edged variety, they'll often say brown die cut. Ever wondered what does that mean? Here are some dies that are used to shape and press out the pasta. For commercial products, the rougher edge from the brown size will create starchier pasta water for better emulsification with the cheese, and will also allow the sauce to cling onto the noodles better. Authentic Italian dishes often use just pasta water and grated cheese to create a cream sauce. Starchy water is essential for cacio e pepe. For home use, fresh pressed noodles will be very starchy from any dye more so than dried brown die cut ones. You still want durable metal dies for larger noodles as they withstand pressure better, but otherwise, plastic dies are the most common for home models, even among premium brands like Philips. I was thrilled to be sent this free Rosari model for review, as I've been curious about this type of pasta makers for a long time. I love fresh-made rigatoni from restaurants, but didn't want to commit to potentially another kitchen gadget that I use once and never use again. I want to give you as balanced opinion as possible. First of which is, ignore the manufacturer's instruction in cups. All-purpose flour is much lighter than 175 grams per cup. You will end up with too much water per cup and too wet a dough that gets stuck. Just keep track of the hydration percent by weight. If you don't have a scale, Weight per quarter cup can generally be found on product labels under nutritional facts. Just keep track of your flour weight and multiply by 35% to get your water weight. First thing I tried was the classic two-ingredient semolina pasta. The hard durum wheat and low hydration are what gives the pasta that signature al dente chew. One cup of finely milled semolina is about 180 grams. 35% of that is about 60 grams of water. Use very hot water for semolina pasta. I'm adding half a teaspoon of salt now. Salting at this stage is optional. Just be mindful that fresh pasta cooks much faster than dried, so you would need to heavily salt your cooking water if you're using unsalted pasta. Choose the shape for your pasta. I'm making rigatoni. Just snap the attachment in. Secure it tightly. And in goes the semolina. Turn the machine on and slowly drizzle the water in. This process should mimic handmade dough, where we try to hydrate all of the flour as evenly as we can. 35% hydration dough will be very dry and difficult to work with by hand, but takes almost no effort with the pasta maker. After a quick toss, this will rest for a few minutes under the default setting. You have the option to skip this with a quick or manual setting, but resting will make the noodles softer to press, and you gotta make some sauce anyways, so I would just go with the default setting to start with. Once the resting stage is over, the pasta maker will automatically extrude the noodles. It's a little difficult to cut the hollow noodles perfectly, but for me that's not really a problem. Having homemade noodles look a little hand cut is kinda unique in its own way, if anything, it seemed to impress the guest more. Cook the pasta until it floats. This is really good tossed with a fresh pesto. Just so obviously different from the store-bought stuff. I have a 1 minute pesto video on how to make this if you're interested. I've also made a low hydration alkaline ramen in this. I used the same ingredients as my previous ramen video except here I reduced the hydration from 40% to 35%. Lower hydration noodles have more of a bite and soaks up soup faster. They're also very difficult to work with by hand. 
This really turned out better than I expected. Check out how stretchy and bouncy the noodle is. You can also make the infamously difficult soba noodle this way and get good results without the mad skills. Soba is a Japanese noodle made out of buckwheat flour. Despite its name, buckwheat is actually a different crop from wheat and is gluten-free. The low hydration combined with the lack of gluten makes this noodle particularly challenging to make by hand. You can find buckwheat flour in a gluten-free aisle of your grocery, along with all the other flour alternatives. And here's our gluten-free noodles that holds together. You do need to cook or bag them right away, as gluten-free noodles dry out fast and break easily if left uncovered. I recommend using half all-purpose and half buckwheat if you're new to soba and don't require gluten-free. All in all, I think of this like an air fryer. You certainly don't need one, especially if you already have a convection oven. But if you have one, you will keep using it and enjoy it. This sample model I have here is roughly the size of a small air fryer or food processor, and it's quite a bit cheaper than similar products from premium brands. I'll put an Amazon link in the description if you're interested. I hope this video has been helpful. Feel free to comment below and let me know if you'd like to see more gadget reviews. Thanks for watching. See you next time with more recipe videos.